So I want to thank you all for joining us today and welcome. And I'll hand it over to Paula. And when we're, Paula will let us know, but we're going to lead the kids out in a little bit. But um, so we'll have like a slight little pause in the program. This is why I So anyways, thank you, Paula. Right. Now, here's the I'll go get it. I'll go get your new clicker. Okay. Well, thank you, Taylor. You just did half of my introduction, so that's pretty cool. So I can just move right along here. Okay. Welcome, Clover Buds. Not Clover Buds. Yeah, Clover Buds. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> I would like first, before I get started, I'd like to give a big, nice thank you shout out to Miss Adele because she helped me with this PowerPoint. And if it wasn't for her, you'd be looking at some very artistic flip charts. Let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so she's helped a lot of people with these uh, presentations. So bug slugs, garden thugs. I'm sure a lot of you master gardeners out there already know about these insects, but we'll start with some of them anyway. For the big bugs, that's what I'm going to call the adults here today for you guys. And then remember, you little guys down here, what are you? You're my big eyed bugs. So you're going to watch up here and pay attention. <clears throat> the topic is going to, I'm going to be concentrating for the adult bugs uh, on several common insect pests that you might find in your backyard. And trust me, I found a lot. I've never seen so many types of ants in my whole life. And we're going to be working with IPM integrated plant management and how to, how to prevent, not totally get rid of because you can't, and a variety of other things we can do with insects instead of using the, what I like to call, death kill spray, which is insecticides and stuff, but sometimes you need that. So let us start. Now, oh, this clicker stuff is in, which way it goes forward? Right. Okay, I was using her. Sorry, I was using a different clicker when I practice. <laughs> First PowerPoint, bear with me. All right. There we go. Here we go now. Does this have, does this have a thing that I can point? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, we're looking for the red pointer. This, if you have cats out there, they're going to have fun. There's this button right here. Okay. But it's hard, it doesn't. All right. Okay. So, okay, good. Here we go. <gasps> what do these insects have in common? That's a big question here. So, for those of you who really know what an old fashioned clock works like, we are going to do clockwise, which means we're going to start with nothing. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, fraps. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what frass is, it's bug poop. <laughs> so uh, I gave you the answer. Darn, I just messed that up. All right, let's pretend. Rewind. Okay, here we go. What insect is that off to the very far left? Who can tell me? One of my uh, raise your hand. <gasps> yes, go ahead. What is it? A cockroach, and this is the American cockroach, but we here in Florida like to call them palmetto bugs because it sounds so much nicer than cockroach. The next one off to the right of that going this way is what? Does anybody know what that is? Oh, what? It's well, sort of, it's a water bug and it's called a boatman. And boatmen uh, actually swim with some of their legs and their legs look like oars, so that's why they call them a boatman. And also, they have a special, they can make a special sack on their body, around their abdomen, and it's like a scuba diving thing, so they can stay under the water for a long period of time, breathing without coming up. The next one, does anybody know what the next one is? <gasps> okay, I think I'm going to have to have, what, what do you think that is? No, it would be the one right up above the dragonfly, but I'll get you on the dragonfly. Okay, adult bugs, who can tell me what the next one is? Silverfish. Yes, you find those around all over the place. Dragonflies. Tell me an interesting thing about a dragonfly. Anybody know anything interesting about a dragonfly? 
Well, you just know all the stuff. You you learned a lot. Well, let's call on her. Yes. They do eat bugs. And do you know how they catch bugs? Do you ever see dragonflies? They're like sitting on top of like sticks or maybe dead, dead type of branches and stuff. And they're looking around and they're waiting for a prey to come along, something to eat. And they swoop down and they grab it with their legs and shoot, shoot it up and eat it. The last one is a lace wing. Lace wings are very interesting because they lay their eggs, their little white legs, eggs, and they're on filaments and they look like little balloons. Hey, these, all of these are ancestors of dinosaurs. They are not dinosaurs, I'm sorry, but before dinosaurs, they're giant insects and they're 300 million years ago. The actually the dragonfly, was a, it was as big as a small hawk. So we mentioned that this is bugs. Bugs actually belong to a group of a, a phylum called arthropods. And under arthropods, there's insects. And under insects, there's bugs. So there's true bugs. And some of them you've seen around. Lace bugs, cicadas, we've all seen cicadas. Water bugs, like we mentioned, stink bugs. Chinch bugs, that we'll talk about a little bit later. And bed bugs, hope you don't ever have to encounter any of those. Yes, yuck. Do we need insects? You bet you we do. Yes, we do. And, but do they need us? Not necessarily. They don't have to because they have other animals to suck blood off of. And also they can work with the uh, plants that are around them. Why do we need them? Okay, what did you, what clover buds? I need somebody else to answer me. What did you learn from Miss Ginny about what insects do? Well, lost my hand. What do you learn about insects that, what, what, that they do? That's okay. Pop it on. Thanks. <laughs> what do they do with flowers? What do they do? Well, yeah, they poop everywhere, but what do they do with flowers? What do they do? They pollinate very good, so they make food. And also, they're, they're good for biocontrol. They'll eat other insects, and they'll eat weeds, and they're, uh, they're a good source for other animals like birds. What insect makes a food that we can eat? Yes, a bee, and what do they make? Honey, very good. And do you know that some doctors and scientists are experimenting with bee and wasp venom to help with joint pain for rheumatoid arthritis, a big word, ask your grandparents. And, it, and they're, always, they're also very nice to see because they're very aesthetic and pretty to look at. Now, keep in mind, I am not an entomologist, and um, so I don't study insects. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at insect parts. You have the head, the thorax, the abdomen. In the head, you have two compound eyes, and they have a bunch of little lenses, and they look around. You have two antennae. The antennae are used for senses. Feeling, smelling, detecting, moving around. And then you have mouth parts. The mouth parts, there's five different types of mouth parts. There are three chewing mouth parts. You have mandibles where insects will chew. You have the sucking, piercing. We know those, mosquitoes. And then you have the scraping sucking, where they'll scrape off the top layer of the plant and then suck up the juices in underneath. And you have ones that aren't so damaging to the plants, and those would be your sponging. You all have spongers. Flies. Mm -hmm. And they'll spit out some special fly spit, and then it makes the food all nice and mushy, and they go and suck it all up. Yeah. And then there's the butterflies, which you studied with Miss Jenny. And what do they have? Does anybody know what that's called? It's like a straw-like thing. What's that called? Begins with a P. A what? 
It's the mouth. Okay. One of my adult bugs, help them out. Proboscis. That's right. And they'll suck up that. Now the, uh, the next part is the thorax or the middle of the body. And that's used for movement. How do insects move? Uh, I want a clover bud to answer that for me. How do insects move? You know, come on. With their noses? No. <laughs> How do they move? Yes. With their feet? How many legs do they have? How many legs do they have? Go ahead. Six. Three sets. Six. And how else can they move? Fly. They could have maybe no wings, or maybe they could have four sets of wings like we saw. Now the <clears throat> as we see here in the dragonfly, ah, uh, the inside of the insect, the back part of the insect is called the abdomen, and in the abdomen, that's where they will digest their food, where they can lay their eggs, where they can frass. Special adult word for bug poop. They can. They have self defense back there. They can have stingers, and also communicate. They have little holes in the side of their body that they can breathe through. And their skeletons are on the outside, not on the inside. They're called exoskeletons. So I call them a nice crunchy outer layer. It's made up of waxy protein called a cuticle. Keep in mind that not every creature, or uh, keep in mind that every creature on earth is doing what they need to do. They need to survive. So what do they need? What do you need to survive? You don't, yeah, I'm here. Well, obviously you're not gonna make it. <laughs> what do you need to survive? Food. Food, right, what else? Water. Water. And some place to keep you warm, shelter. Okay, so that's what insects are doing too. And they're less than 1% of insects are really harmful to your plants. You learned this, only you learned it with a butterfly, clover buds. This is called a complete metamorphosis, which is how the insects grow up. In this case, you see there's a ladybug or a lady beetle. They have little yellow eggs. And then look at that. I'll tell you what, their larva is nasty looking. I wouldn't want to mess with that if I was an insect. And then it goes down. You see the arrow going down into the uh, pubis stage and then the adult insect. An incomplete metamorphosis is like a grasshopper where you have the adult lay the egg and then the nymph, that's like a teenager, doesn't quite have it all together yet. And then it grows up into an adult. <laughs> so we are going to do, and then we're not gonna quit right here. I'm just gonna get into the detective and then that's when they're gonna go out. Are they going for the scavenger hunt next? We don't know. Okay, so this is Florida Friendly Landscape. And for those of you who have tuned in to the other presentation, I'm number six. Manage your yard pests. Well, you want to make sure that uh, you select the right plant, right place. Always grow resistant type plants so that you don't have the same plants attracting the same type of insect pests all the time. And most of your plant population can withstand. Remember that nice garden that you just put in and all the little uh, plants are coming up and they're all nice and tender. You might as well put a neon sign out that says bug buffet. <laughs> what is a pest? So a pest could be just about anything. It is something that is unwanted in your yard or your area. It could be a skunk. I like to call skunks the groundhogs, armadillos. I like to call them my diggers because they'll dig in for grubs and they like to eat the grubs, but then they leave a hole. Well, they've already dug your hole for you, put a plant in it. And the other one would be a mosquito. We talked about the mosquito, how they bite. 
Why are you itchy? Because they put out special mosquito spit into your skin before they suck the blood out and your skin goes, whoa, that's something I didn't realize. And so it's nice and itchy. So you scratch yourself. And of course, your little sister. Now, we can control the first two, but you're stuck with your little sister. So the last part, and then this is where the little clover buds are going to depart from us. We're bringing in props. I love props. You are going to be bug detectives. Be a yard detective. You want to go out there and look for insects. And would this be a good point to have them go out? Now, what are they going to be doing now? At the picnic tables and discuss what your next fun activity is going to do. So have fun. Thank you, Clover Buds, for joining me this morning and all the adult bugs. Where am I coming? Okay. We're going. All right. So be a plant detective. Now, it's going to be hard to go from kid mode to adult mode. I've been working on this all, all week long. So bear, bear with me. Let's just have some fun. Just pretend. Just pretend. <laughs> Is your plant environmentally stressed? I could be an environmentally stressed plant right now, let me tell you. <laughs> or is it insect damage? And that's what you want to find out. You want to find out if it's insect damage or if it's stress. If it's stress, you don't want to get out there with a death kill spray and get rid of something that's not really there. Be preventative through scouting. Scout your whole plant. Look at your plant. Look at the top of your plant, the flower, underneath the leaves, on the stems, on the ground. You're looking for frass. And I'll tell you, the tomato worm has some pretty wicked looking press. There's a, uh, there are good bugs and there are bad bugs. So you don't want to be killing the good bugs just to get rid of the bad bugs. Here's an example of our environmental stress to a tomato plant. It was injured by herbicides. It wasn't applied correctly. And of course, you know your stressors, not enough water, maybe too much water, too much fertilizing, always fertilize responsibly. Uh, too cold, we found that out. Yes. Heat. Huh? Heat. heat. Yes, heat. Heat. They'll say full sunlight. Uh, you want to give them a little bit of shade here. It's just like a full sunlight out there. They're just roasting and toasting. So they should need some shade so they don't have to have eight or, eight or six hours of sun all day long. You just have to find the right place to plant your plants. Make sure that your soil has the right nutrients and pH balance. You can bring that here to the miners. Well, I might as well mention it right now. We're here in Yulee, Florida, Miners Road Extension. And there is Taylor Clem here who just went out with the children and also master gardeners who can help you with your questions. That'll come up in the end, but I won't have to repeat it again. Mechanical damage, lawnmowers, weed whackers, like I said, chemical stuff. Drought. Now this picture is from the Missouri Botanical Garden, but let's face it, they, there's drought everywhere. And if that goes too much more unchecked, it might even be beyond repair now. It's just gonna get brown and, and shrivel up in that. And then on the right-hand side, it's hard to see. That is a damage by a white fly. And you can see how in the inside of the leaf, it's all chewed up. <laughs> we already said, you don't know if there's pests. A lot of them camouflage themselves very well. And some plants are even sensitive to certain products, which we'll get into a little bit later. <sighs> Turf grass. Step out your door, unless you have a bunch of rocks or cement, you're going to step onto some grass. So your turf has a lot of different insects that can damage. I just picked out three that I found to be rather interesting. You have your white grubs, which come from beetles, and they will, uh, they're like your Schaefer beetle larvas, Japanese beetle, and your June bug, which actually comes out in May. And these are all the larvas of the thing. You can see it has a nice 
backward C shape. And <clears throat> there are good, there are good grubs, and they may be in your compost or around your yard, and they will they will help to aerate the soil and eat decaying material. Limit your moisture, watch with your organic material, and also make sure that your soil and your grass is good and healthy. You can use a milky spore, to try to get rid of them. Also beneficial nematodes, there's good nematodes and there's bad nematodes, and a parasitic wasps and flies, which often lay their eggs into the insects and they eat that. Plus birds, you have cardinals, blackbirds, robins, catbirds, and even some of those birds will eat the beetles themselves. The other one is the chinch bug. Some evidence of a chinch bug in your yard is all nice and green, and then all of a sudden it's started to turn yellowish brown and maybe even some dead patches. The best way to detect to see if you have chinch bugs is to go in between the green, where the green grass is and the yellowish, and this is where you can become a bug detective. You might even need a magnifying glass and don't do what those bad boys did way back when where they tried to burn ants with them in the sun. So you're going to go out there and you will look and you, you see the adult chinch bug. There's a picture here. It is white and black and their nymphs are an orangish color. What likes to eat chinch bugs? Big eyed bugs. So you want to also look for a big eyed bug. And some of the, you have to find pictures and there's all different places where you can do research to find that. Always have a good, healthy yard. Make sure it's watered properly. Not too much water. You don't want a lot of puddling, although sometimes you can't help that with the Florida rains that we have. You have um, nutrients that you want to make sure the soil has everything in it that it needs. If you have a good, healthy lawn, you probably won't have to dethatch and pull out all the dead stuff. Um, <clears throat> And that's about that for those two. I find these to be interesting. I know they're mole crickets. I never saw mole crickets before until I moved to Florida. And they have what are called front paws that are dactyls and they're their forearms and they can dig around just like a regular mole would dig around under the ground. You'll have evidence of that because you'll see little trails. It's like moles leave there. And they will eat the roots and the grass, both. Again, healthy turf grass. And who likes to eat those? Well, you have your good nematodes again. You have your spiders that aren't quite particular. They eat just about everything. Tiger, billy, tiger beetles, Laura wasps, birds, and the ground diggers. Now, snails and slugs are not... Arthropods, they are of the phylum mollusca. And they, when you think of them, well, you think of slug slime. They leave a slimy little trail, that's their mucus behind, that you can see it along. They move along with a, uh, with a part of the body that's a long muscular foot that extends like the snail, uh, the length of the snail. And they will, it's called a mantle, the flap of skin, and they will eat with a mouth called a radula. And the radula is like a conveyor belt. And in this conveyor belt, there's thousands of little teeth where they can chew and, and munch up the food and masticate it and then digest it. There are not too many predators that like slugs, and I can understand why. And <clears throat> a snail. It's a fancy slug. It has a cotton dough on its back. But they're all, all together in the same family. They like wet, damp areas. You don't want to put a lot of leaf and uh, mulch around the stuff. You might want to use pine straw. That would help because they don't particularly care to crawl over rough things. And talking about that, you could use DE or diatomaceous earth, and diatomaceous earth is uh, ground up fossils of 
green algae with a silicone-based shell. But when you put the diatomaceous earth down, you have to make sure it's, it's dry. And then if it just rains and you still have slugs, you might have to put it back down. Again, there's also slug baits. You can make up your own or you can get a one that's already pre-made. Or you can do my favorite way of taking care of insects, and that's hand picking. I just find if some people like weeding, I'm okay with hand picking insects. So <clears throat> with that, you don't want to pick it up with your hand. If anybody's ever picked up a slug with your hand, you've got that sticky stuff on. It just seems like it takes a lot of soap and water to get it off. So use some tweezers, drop it into some rubbing alcohol or a baking and water soda solution. And what eats snails? Well, garter snakes, uh, moles, but then they destruct, green and only lizards, ducks and turtles, but you have to watch because they will also eat your nice little tender plants. And that's what snails and slugs like to eat or tender plants. You can also plant some slug resistant herbs such as rosemary, sage guard, uh, lavender, geranium, garlic, and chives. We like to put marigolds into the ground to, for, for bug repellent and stuff. Snails like marigolds. Uh-huh. So don't plan them for the snails. You can see some snail damage there. Scouting. Like I said, be a bug detective. Look for your pests all over your plant. Look for different stages of them. Um, as you can see, there's a bunch of aphids here. Frass. I've been talking about frass insect excrement, or it's like the kids say bug poop. Good bugs, bad bugs, bad bugs, good bugs. You're beneficial, you're not so beneficial. You're prey, you're predators. Learn the difference between them. No, like, because some of them look similar. Some good bugs look similar to the bad bugs in different stages. Uh, not, they're not all pests. Looking here, in the middle, you see a tomato hornworm. Most of you have probably seen those on your tomatoes. They're big and fat and juicy. And the brocnid wasp will lay its eggs in it. And then after that, the eggs will cocoon. The larva will go down into the uh, caterpillar and it will eat it. So that's their food. Bug eat bug world. Here we go, IPM, Integrated Pest Management. If you notice on the triangle here, chemicals are the smallest. So we're gonna start with cultural and cultural is, um, well, here we go. Not all of them are pesty. And just a quick little thing about a prey mantis. They can turn their head 180 degrees so that you can see what's coming behind them. And they will go out and grab whatever, and it doesn't have to be an insect. I saw one on my hummingbird feeder, and I thought, oh, it's eating all the bird, all the bees and the ants and everything else that's there. And then I thought, oh, I better do some research. And I did. And sure enough, they will eat hummingbirds. So do not kill it because it's a wonderful pest. I mean, it's wonderful pest control. It's a wonderful predator. So do not kill it. Just gently knock it into a bag or container and relocate it away because they can fly. So away from your hummingbird feeder because I really like my insects, but I love my hummingbirds. <clears throat> the true cause of the problem, many pest problems are symptoms of improper growing conditions. Okay, is your plant healthy? Did you buy a sick plant? Maybe you're one of these plant doctors and likes to nurture these sick plants back into health and now you're a plant hero. But you should always look to see if the plants have insects on them or legs, eggs before you buy them. Make sure you're gonna put them into a healthy environment. Don't have them all overcrowded where they're all fighting for roots. Make sure that there's air coming around so that they're, they just they need the air flowing and also can push away some extra uh, bugs that shouldn't be in there. Uh, right plant, right place. Is the soil correct? Is the light correct? A mosquito only needs a cap. 
from a water bottle to lay its eggs. And it's the female mosquito that bites. That's the smaller one. The male mosquito is larger. He's just having a grand old time, sucking up the nectar in the flowers. Yeah, he's a guy. But uh, the, the female ones, they need that blood for their eggs. Have friendly flowers that you can attract. You want to watch how, how you water. All of you that are master gardeners know that we should be watering early in the morning before the sun gets out and you don't want to water late at night because you don't want things to get all uh, moldy and mushy and stuff like that. So water while there's still some moisture in the leaves and that way you won't be able to, uh, the, the diseases and stuff won't get into the leaves as much because they'll have time during the day to dry out. Uh, plant things that attract good insects into your garden, into your uh, garden area. The different kinds of plants that'll plant all kinds of beneficial insects. If you have bird baths, clean them out very well. Or the next thing you know, you're going to have a bunch of swimmers in there, and you know what those are: mosquito larvae. Unless you're trying to attract dragonflies, and that's their favorite food. Um, un unhealthy landscape again, the soil. Outdoor lighting also attracts insects. Companion planting, plant in different types of flowers and herbs in with your other types of plants. You can do crop rotation where you don't plant the same crop in one area if you're doing larger gardens because you can, uh, the same insect won't eat some of the other types of plant and make sure that your soil is fertile. Physical method, like I said, this is my favorite. I like to hand pick. So you can remove it. And on the next slide, I'm going to show you what you can do with those insects. If you have part of your plant that's infested and you can't really get rid of those insects, trim that part off. And if you're able to burn, if you live somewhere where you can burn, burn that. If not, go ahead and put it into uh, a bag and put it out with the trash. You do not want to put it into your compost because there could still be some insects or insect eggs and larvae in there that could also spread around. You can put up baits. They sometimes they have baits that are have pheromones and stuff in it. And I'm sure most of you don't have pitcher plants or Venus fly traps hanging around in your, uh, in your backyard. I have, I have pitcher plants way in my backyard. It's so cool. Uh, so also you can put nets around to prevent some insects and then other pests like deer. Deer can come in and wipe out a garden in no time flat in one evening. <clears throat> Here you go. Three methods. You can drop your pests in the soapy water or rubbing alcohol. Place them in the freezer overnight in a bag or container. Now, don't forget that you have them there because somebody might take it as a topping for ice cream. <laughs> crush, crush them. You can crush it with your hands, a book, your foot, put it in the trash. Now you've got bug guts all over you, but <laughs> we're gardeners. What's a bug gut? We said provide food for beneficials, provide shelter, make sure that insects have a place to go and stay where they can protect themselves. They can, win they can winter or they can cool off. Provide, still provide moisture, but make sure, like I said, that it's clean. Here's some of your herbs and flowers that you can plant. I'll leave that up for a minute and you can just look at that. Predators are fewer than the prey, but that's okay. They're swift, they're vicious, they eat. We have a couple pictures of predators here. You have the assassin bug nymph. I mean, that just sounds mean. You have the big eyed bugs. And we're mentioning here, there are, you can get bugs that are commercially uh, raised, big eyed bugs, lace wings, and Ladybugs. And ladybugs, if you have aphid problems, because if you have 
certain plants, maybe like roses. I had aphids on a low pot tree. And if you have a lot and you could go out and really actually purchase the ladybugs, just make sure you know when to release them. It's in the evening when it's cooler so they don't fly away. And then when they crawl back up out, they'll find their big old aphid bug buffet and they will be happy as can be. If the food is there, they will stay and eat it. I have a list here of some predators and pests, AKA dinner. <clears throat> Good bug, bad bug. Jumping spider, it'll eat all of them in the middle. It's just it's going to eat all of them. Fascinating thing about them, they have very good vision. And they also jump not with strong back legs, but with the way the blood flows through the legs and pushes them up to jump out at their prey and then grab it and go back to have a nice meal. The leaf-footed bug is taken care of by parasitic wasps. And the minute pirate bug, a midi, it will eat the chili thrips. You mentioned they kill large number of prey. Uh, generalist, they're just out there eating everything. They don't care. Now, some of them are specific, but most of them are generalist. Parasites. Ooh, we talked about parasites on the tomato worm. They often are tiny, a uh, little parasitic fly, parasitic, yeah, you're good. Parasitic flies, parasitic bees, and they'll lay their eggs into the actual larva, even the egg sacs of other insects. And this is kind of the things that you would look for here. Uh, difference of color, like you see a healthy, aphid, and then you see an aphid that's starting to change color, probably it's all had the life sucked out of it, and now it's just a crusty shale. And ex biological control. Biological control is use of natural uses of pathogens. And pathogens are found in healthy soil, they are natural native fungi and bacteria, which help to reduce the insect population. Spinosad is a natural substance created by soil bacteria that negatively affects thrips, leaf miners, and mites. Oh my. BT, which I don't even want to try to pronounce that, is it says it's good for caterpillars when they ingest it, but it's also good as it interferes with an insect's rep reproductive life cycle. And that's a good way to start to deplete the insect, that pest insect population. We talked about some sap suckers, which are your scraping, sucking insects. You can use biological controls. Soap and oil, BT, manchures, grasshoppers. And now into the dreaded chemical methods. Chemicals, you have to be very careful with chemicals. The label is the law. You do not want to be putting chemicals on something that it should not have it on. Um, <clears throat> If you feel very uncomfortable with that, make sure that you have a professional come and do it. And if you live in an HOA, you're gonna to have to check that out to see exactly what they will permit you to have there. <laughs> Nothing prevents insects. They're gonna be out there. They were out there in prehistoric time. They're here now, they're gonna keep on going. Always, like I said, read the label. It will tell you exactly what to do. You're going to choose the least harmful pesticides that you can find. Don't, uh, you don't want to use broad spectrum killers. It kills everything. 
It's just, it, it messes up the full balance of the ecosystem. Shotgun approach is find it on one plant or one spot and just shoot that spot. <laughs> Believe it or not, most plants in urban landscapes are overspread. In fact, homeowners apply four to 10 times more than, guard, than farmers. So get it, stop doing that death kill spray stuff. Unless it's really trouble. Like I said, it disrupts the balance of things. Nature has a nice balance. And when you add something into that, it really messes up that whole nice little ecological balance thing. It contaminates the environment, not only the air, but the water source. You get down into the water, go into the streams, and thusly affecting aquatic life. It could be a health hazard, both to you, your family, your children, your animals. Always check with, about your pets with pesticides. And, uh, especially, and especially if you have uh, lung problems, asthma, things like that, it's probably not a good idea for you to be sprained. And they can damage, it can damage plants. We'll talk just a little bit about that in a minute. Pest, eventually, when you spray, it's going to kill your pests, but it will also affect the beneficial insects. The pests will become immune, just like if you would take some kind of antibiotic for a long period of time. Your body is now becoming immune to that, and you have to switch off to another one. So uh, people that are out there with the pesticide, they're always changing the formula because these insects become immune to it. But in the, in, when that's happening, then your good, your predator insects are dying off and you have less of them. This one talks about horticulture oils. Now, neem oil comes from, and you can see the tree right here, it comes the oil actually comes from the seed kernels and it has a garlic-like odor. There is a biological soap, it's called pyrethrin and it is made up of chrysanthemum flowers, citronella oil and neem oil. Even though some of these may say natural and even if you mix up some of your own, please be careful with that because it may not be so natural and it may affect the plant by burning it out if you spray it at the wrong time. As you can see down on the bottom, the phytotoxicity is due to an insecticide soap that was sprayed at the wrong time on a hot, humid day, wrong time of the day, and the sun just sort of burn it out. If you are using a soap wash, unfortunately, a lot of the soap that we have now has fragrance. Your dish soap has degreaser, which will take off the nice waxy coating that's on your plant that's protecting your plant. So you're gonna really have to research on that to see if you could find a soap that would work for that. Uh, the best thing to do, I, I think I mentioned it earlier, would to be do like a, if you wanted to do a soapy wash thing, do it in your turf to see what kind of insects you might have in there. Cause then you can pour the uh, soapy water in there, do a bunch of it to drench it. You're not really going to kill those insects so much as you're going, well, they'll come up out of the ground and you'll be able to see like what stage they're in, how many that you might have there. Is it an infestation? Is it just a little bit of them crawling around? Are there good beneficial insects there with it also? Um, it's best to just purchase actually a commercial formula that's emulsified and registered with the EPA. So, wow, this is what you've all been waiting for. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope that we've had a good review for those of you who have already studied integrated pest management, figuring out some strategies that you can use in your yard for some of your pests that wouldn't be all detrimental and that you can identify some of your pests in your backyard. So, yes, indeed, it is a bug's life. And in conclusion, what it is, wherever you decide that you want to do, whether you want to use um, 
organics, hand picking, let predators take care of it, use chemicals, please be responsible bug people. And if you have something in your yard that you do not want to, oh, why is it not moving? But you do not want to, let's see if that does anything. I just lost the whole thing here. Oh, man. Hmm. Oh, well. All right, we'll get to the end here. I lost the deal, too. Flip chart! <laughs> I can try, I'll try to get those other ones up. I don't know why it just kind of died out on me here. Adele, I can't get the last two slides. Good thing I didn't go overtime, huh? <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Um, but anyway, I'll just talk about this. There'll be information here about different sites that I looked at on the next page if it comes up. Uh, and then the last page will give you information as to how to reach the office here. If you find insects, very good, thank you. Uh, if you find insects in your yard, you could take a picture of the insect or whatever stage you might think it's in. You could take a picture of the plant and you could bring that in and show a master gardener here or tailor, or you can actually bring it in yourself. Now, it's a good idea to bring the insect in pretty fresh so it's crawling around and you can see what kind of legs it has and wings and everything before it goes up like that. And then you can't really tell what it is. So you can bring it in, but make sure it's in a container that's tight or zip locked up because that, what you don't want to be doing is spreading some kind of pesty insect all across Nassau County. So with that in mind, I think I did pretty good. Yeah, I didn't get, I didn't really get to do thing. I didn't really get to do some of my fun stuff, but hey, well, we're looking to see if there's any questions. Everyone's probably going, huh? <laughs> I'm not used to his computer. I walked too far again. Podium here. So hmm. you're, just, you're just so good at this. No, I guess I'm not. <laughs> Thank you so much for bearing with me on my first ever yeah, PowerPoint no, presentation. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. I, you know, I, I can't get it to come up for questions. So, oh darn! <laughs> now, if any, can they still hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you do have any questions, you can always call over here. Was, was there a phone number on with all that stuff too? There was. Yeah, okay. There you was. can always call over here and ask ask an MGD. That's not letting <laughs> or, me. Or, or or Taylor. Okay. It's not letting me. I'm sorry, folks. We don't have. I can't get us logged in for questions. So. You'll have to contact Taylor or the extension office. Yeah. See, it's up there, but I can't get it out here. I don't know. It's 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 that computer bad mojo stuff. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. And um hopefully you'll come next month for our next program. And thanks again. Have a great day. Okay. Stay hey, cool. Everyone just bug off. <laughs> huh? I guess you guys are going outside now in the heat. Oh, now uh, maybe up. not. Huh? Now it's up? Oh. <gasps> Live new messages. Okay, how's that one? <laughs> they responded to your question. I don't see the bugs. Before you guys go, I have to treat. This is actually from Curtin. Sure. And it was given to my daughter in law, who's a teacher kid, except for the West. And I guess she's a very conservative person. I don't know. But anyway, I can't even walk. Oh, this is stuff we needed. How would they get me here? Do we worry about it?